And good morning, everyone. Come on in, come on in. It is time for us to get started. This is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and we're excited that you are joining us this morning. As you all come into the space, please take some time to go to your Facebook spaces and share. We're giving you a little time to share now. This is open to the public. Anyone that you know really means everyone should be aware of what's happening in our communities, local, national, and globally. And that's what awareness is all about. So we thank you all for being a part of today. So please right now, share, share, share. Okay, we're giving you time to share. And, uh, and that's what this is all about. So as we um, all jump in, I want to make sure that um, you all are aware that we can see all of your faces. If you could mute yourselves, if you're coming into, you can definitely chat, um, but mute your, your, your uh, voices. Um, but we definitely want to see your faces because this is going to be interactive. Um, so any way that you feel that you want to, to uh, view it, that's, that's important. Okay, so hopefully you all have shared. Um, our president, um, Denise Baker, cannot be with us today. So we are starting our welcomes off with our first VP and our second VP, Dr. Kamisha Carter and Erica Moore, Soror or Erica Moore and Soror Kamisha Carter. Greetings and salutations. What a phenomenal day to celebrate those who are not the, the, the invisible, the people who don't, don't have a voice. I bring you greetings from the St. Louis Metropolitan Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta. And on behalf of Janice Baker, our president, in her absence, I am Dr. Tamisha Carter, the first vice president over membership services. Greetings and welcome for an astonishing um, day with our own Tracy Barry McGee and also um, Dr. Alana, we are looking forward to you getting information. And those of you who are still not shattering your silence, we are here for you as well. Information will be provided so you can get help. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Greetings. My name is Erica Moore, and I am the second vice president at St. Louis Metropolitan Alumni Chapter, serving over program planning and development programs. Physical and Mental Health Committee falls under my purview, and I am glad to have you join us for this very important conversation. Thank you to our moderator and our guest doctor, Dr. Alana and Sar um, Tracy Berry McGee, for being with us and sharing some valuable information that could help you or someone you know and care about. So thank you to our committee co-chairs, Sarah Cher Sarah Cheryl Harmon and Sybil Smith, and the entire physical and mental health committee for bringing us this opportunity to learn. I am sure you will leave today's conversation with lots to think about and resources to help someone in need. So thank you so much for joining us today, and we hope you um, do walk away with some great information. Thank you all so much for being with us. So it's time. I hope that you all have shared. We keep asking you share, 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 and share some more. You know how it works. You just go down here and you click share and you share it to all of your groups, all of your family members and all of your friends. But most importantly, we hope that you tune in. And if you don't get a chance to listen to everything, make sure that you go back and watch it again and then share it. If you're not up or you're running or you're in the car, share it at 11 o'clock, share it at 12 o'clock. But the important thing is that we get this message out. Okay, so I just wanna introduce our soror and the trauma psychiatrist, um, the only one. We wanna talk to you about Dr. Alana Curry. She's America's only trauma psychiatrist, but she's also one of our own. She focuses exclusively on educating people about the impact of psychological trauma, visual, and collective mental health from a brain, body, and behavioral perspective. After graduating summa cum laude from Xavier University of Louisiana and obtaining her medical degree from Baylor College of Medicine, she provided intensive trauma treatment for the U.S. military veterans for 12 years. 
she recognizes the pervasive yet predictable patterns produced by the primitive brain, which you'll learn more about today. I want to let you all know that she is very concrete and you all's getting it. So don't think that she's going to get it over your head. You're going to get it, okay? Because this is for us to be able to share this. Rather than seeing stress as traumatizing, she wants you all to see this as an opportunity to eliminate the stigma of trauma. And her hope is that this is a transformational, informational that will trigger an empathy evolution. So everybody, welcome Dr. Alana. I have to unmute myself. Thank you so much, ladies. Um, it's, it's exciting to be here. Um, I'm grateful to have the platform to explain this information to you all. Um, thank you for turning on your cameras because I want this to be uh, an engaged conversation. I like seeing your faces and your reactions. And this is not me giving a talk. This is me connecting with you, engaging with you, and really um, giving you uh, a piece of myself and then vice versa. So thank you so much for choosing to be here this morning to have this really, really important conversation. So um, what I love about this, uh, first of all, I have to say that my this is my mother's chapter. My mother is Carolyn McLean. Okay. I sent her a text message like, ma'am, uh, where are you? Uh, I'm talking to your chapter, but I want to tell you that um, this is special for me because I was, um, I was a product of the Delta Sigma Theta efforts in St. Louis. I, I didn't even realize that my mom was uh, connected to Delta, but she made sure that I did things like the Aria um, and Dell teams and other things like that. And she kept me busy uh, so that I would be shaped by Delta. And then I went to Xavier University, the same school that she went to, and I pledged Gamma Alpha. So I'm very excited to be here. And uh, this is our 20 years. So we almost legal, y'all. Hey! <laughs> All right. So thank you so much for being here. I'm going to hand it back to Dr. Tracy, but I just wanted to um, just take a moment to connect with you and say hello. So good morning. Well, we are excited about um, happy, happy Deltaversary. Yeah. <laughs> um, we're really excited about the value of what it looks like in our community to understand something that so many of us either have been privy to witnessing and wanting to help and know what that looks like and also realizing that trauma is real. I want to start um, with the, the big picture and then go in. Explain to everyone um, what is trauma, uh, how we see it and how you see it um, from a a different perspective that I think we can all appreciate. Yes. So trauma is usually thought about as you getting hit by somebody or someone put their hands on your body. And I think for a very long time, uh, people have thought about trauma as you have to go to war, you have to be physically harmed. But trauma also occurs in non-physical contact. And I venture to say that there's more trauma that happens in non-physical contact than physical contact. Trauma is anything that you experience that is so negative that it changes the way you think about yourself, other people, and the rest of the world. That's the definition of trauma. And that is a really, really, really big bag, if you think about it, right? We're, right? we're starting to realize that there are lots of things that are traumatic. Um, you can be traumatized by uh, racism, uh, sexism, poverty and stress, um, the, your, the people who raised you having difficulty with their own emotional and mental health. Hello, we didn't have all these diagnoses and labels, but folks was struggling, right? We, we just a few generations out of slavery. Come on, y'all. Come on. Right, right. And right. we have been chronically abused, okay? And how I got here was that when Michael Brown Jr. was killed in Ferguson, I started studying what was going on in the world. And I was like, 
watching the news, seeing them describe the exact same events, but one is protests and one is riots, right? Um, and how the brain interprets things. But God let me, and I'm, let me say, I'm very, very, very clear that it was not by my power, by my smarts, by my own anything. I was just asking the right questions. Like, what's wrong with us? Like, I mean, I have held this globe and been like, (laughs) something is clearly wrong. So if we're, if I'm in, went through the best of institutions, uh, got the best of training that's available out there right now. And I didn't know that this primitive brain <laughs> was doing things, right? And nobody taught me that this amygdala, this part of the brain that uh, creates emotions was going to be doing stuff. And then I started studying myself and I was like, oh, wow. We, oh, oh. <laughs> Like, oh wow, Alana, if if you as a person who is a PTSD specialist did not recognize all these traumas that were happening in your life as a little black girl who was yes. going, you know, just absorbing the things going on around you, but the folks around you was dealing with their own stuff, right? Yes. And then you understand, oh, words are violent. Words can be violent, y'all. Speaking of that, you know, you, you went back when you talk about when we when we um, ex- first experienced trauma and how it affects our brain. When she's talking about the amygdala, y'all, she's talking about our brain. And and uh, I I know just in my personal experience, the trauma that we experience globally homes you know we are taught what goes on in your house stays in your house in all transparency I grew up seeing a lot of domestic violence and so I knew that I wanted to break that cycle when it came to to me and my family um, because these are things that that create um, uh, patterns you know so could you talk to us about the what that looks like when it's not just physical because there's so many forms of domestic violence. So I want to jump in there because when you said the triggers uh, of the trauma of the brain, it's still imprinted there for me. Yes, that's correct. Well, let me do this. Be- before we go into that, I want to show you a portion of one of my educational videos. I created a film series called Master Yourself. And the first episode is Master Your Trauma. And I'm going to show you um, Minding Your Mind. And this portion is this portion of the video talks about these primitive brain systems that are programmed by these negative experiences. And let me be clear that um, the invisible traumas that we have are things like people calling you ugly or um, somebody talking about your nose, your hair, your lips, your body, you being told you're too fat or too tall or too short or too whatever, or you telling yourself that because you've been programmed by seeing all of the uh, less melanated people that are on the television and that sets up beauty standards that are inconsistent with how your beautiful divine body uh, represents itself. So even in those things, we're absorbing psychological trauma because our brains need representation of success in order for us to mirror that because we soak up a lot of these things. So there is so it, there is no one who has not experienced domestic violence, if you want to be honest about it. Right. Come on, let's have a real conversation. That's right. That's right. Real, that part. Let's have a real conversation today. The statistics say uh, like one out of seven. Yes. This is one in four women, one in 10 men, and more than 10 million adults experience it. And we haven't even started talking about our babies who watch and see everything and emulate what they see. Yeah. And in part because we don't understand how powerful our words are 
and how they program ourselves and other people, we are not only experiencing domestic violence, but we also are calling it too. Yes. Yes. But, mm, that part. Mm. Yes. Tamisha, Dr. Carter said that part, you know, it, it don't feel good. You know, because uh, we have learned to cut with words, right? Hurt. Words hurt. Yes. Hurt people. Yeah. You hurt people. Hurt people hurt people. And the ways that we have learned to communicate on this earth in 2021 of this year, amen, you are not hearing anyone's real representation of healthy communication, uh, working on being able to speak through your anger in a effective way. Yes. Right? So because of how our brains are designed, when we are communicating without a spiritual awareness, yeah, because your emotions and psyche, you put all of that together, just go ahead and merge it. Emotions are the language of the soul. So we all are, do we talk about we're divine, right? Right. Right. That's that's let's be more literal about this okay you have creative power and all of us are built like this that we're one human race of super beings we just didn't know okay we didn't have this anatomy lesson when we were like seven because we didn't have the technology to do it but we have to reprogram ourselves because we have this tendency to blame this on other people, God, and the devil. <laughs> yes, okay. it's time to be reprogrammed, reprogrammed and reprogrammed the right way. Yeah. yeah, because we have to, and I love that I'm from the show me state, right? Because I'm very <laughs> programmed with this concept of sh show me. Show me, show up. Show me what it looks like to be healthy. Show me what it looks like to love myself enough that I will not accept this pattern of damaging words and damaging actions. I'm going to, I come on, my sister say, I am enough. I am enough. And what's happening with domestic violence is that people are stressed. We in the middle of a viral pandemic, right? We're in the middle of a traumatic experiences. People are in withdrawal and humans are primitive. Yes. So we, you know, they don't realize we have this animalistic spirit in us to act out, you know, and um, I, I want you all again, I'm telling you all over and over again, how important it is to share. Don't keep this information to yourself. If you're watching us online or through Zoom, um, if you have the technology, grab your phones and share it to another sister or brother, because we all need to hear this. Um, our men, our women, our young girls, um, this is what it looks like. I know that Dr. Alana is about to share uh, a video, but I want you all to also understand I'm all about taking notes. So if you have your journal, grab it, uh, get a pen so you can take notes. If you have questions at any point, you can put them in the chat because this is going to be interactive. You all can interact with her. You know, she is from the show me state. You know, you know, you say you don't know me. You know her. You can you can come to her. You know, so this is what this is all about, y'all. So um, please take note. But more than anything, please share these resources. So we're going to get ready. Um, I know that you were talking about the video that you're getting ready to, to set up. Um, again, if there's any questions in, in the chat, um, please, you can put them there and we'll continue to ask questions. But tell us the name of this video again, because you, you have the uh, Trauma Recovery Academy and I want to make sure that I get all that information out there. Yes, ma'am. This is Master Your Trauma and this 
uh, module is called Minding Your Mind. <coughs> and it's going to explain the six primitive brain systems that you that are constantly running and constantly um, helping you make decisions, really making decisions for you, okay? Um, I want to be clear that what I'm saying is we are all animals and we have this biology and is a running <laughs> right now. <laughs> okay, hold on. Everybody, please mute yourselves. Not your faces, but your sound. Okay, hold on. I got the wrong thing up. Give me just a second. So just so you all know, even though we're doing this today, Saturday, today is Saturday, the whole month is um, mental health, is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Um, Saturday, this upcoming <coughs> thing, they will be turning the city uh, purple. So make sure everybody wears purple um, in St. Louis. But if you are in other states, you all probably should do the same thing throughout the month. And again, if everybody can mute themselves when she shows the video, um, that would be great. And then we can open it up for questions. There's a couple, and if not, maybe um, our tech can mute people who haven't muted themselves. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and play. Are you able to see that? Yes, we can. All right, wonderful. It's important for us to take a look at how does this brain actually process information? Your brain is like a CPU. It's your central processing unit, very similar to a computer. Humans are advanced technology. We take in information through our eyes, our ears, nose, mouth, skin, and our brain kicks out interpretations of what we're experiencing. We all operate in a bubble of perception that causes us to think that our version of reality is the reality. Well, that's not really how it works. Each one of us are the actor, director, writer, and producer of how our brain is producing an experience inside of us. We all have our own interpretation of the world and you can really only experience the world through what your physical body gives to you in terms of your limited version of reality. But you really need to know about six primitive brain systems that are so important in the way that we understand the world. The first brain system is the amygdala. The amygdala is the part of your brain that creates your emotions. So your amygdala creates emotions not based on a shared reality that everyone is functioning in. Your amygdala creates your emotions based on your perception of what's happening in your environment at that particular moment. Now, I know that this is probably not how you've been taught about emotions. Most of us have a tendency to think that other people create how we feel. Have you ever heard anyone say, he's making me mad, or she makes me so happy? Those are examples of the widespread myths that we have about emotions. And those myths keep us from understanding that our amygdala is creating the sensations that we feel inside of our body. The second brain system you need to know is your reticular activating system. Your RAS is the part of your brain that is, acts like a filter for information. Our brains can't take in all of the information that we have to process all the time. So our brain filters that information based on what we feel is important to us. For example, your name is going to be programmed in your reticular activating system to respond to. So when someone calls your name, what? Okay, your mind is gonna tune in. Well, with trauma, your reticular activating system is also programmed to further tune into things that may indicate that that trauma is happening again. Unfortunately, this means that your reticular activating system works almost like a honing beacon, pulling your mind towards perceived traumas or real traumas at the same time. And it can be difficult to tell the difference between the two. The next brain system that you need to know is your mirror neurons. Your mirror neurons are a brain system 
that help upload information from your environment. The way that your family, your friends, your teachers, your community, your religious leaders, even the people that you look up to, the way that they talk about things becomes programmed in the way that you perceive them. But the thing about mirror neurons is that they'll pick up information even without you realizing it. So unfortunately, many of us have uploaded dysfunctional and primitive ways of interpreting our environment, and that has very real consequences for how we feel on the inside. The next brain system you need to know about is your somatosensory cortex, or I abbreviate it as the SSC. Your somatosensory cortex is the part of your brain that registers pain. It does not differentiate between physical pain or emotional pain. Now, why is that important? If my foot is on a hot coal, my brain is going to receive a signal from that foot that says, hey, it hurts, move. And my job is gonna be to change the way my body is standing on that so that I don't feel that pain. In the same way, psychological trauma also causes very real pain sensations inside every single one of us. Has anybody ever called you a name that hurt? You don't have to be cussed out to be hurt by other people's words. In fact, we can even be hurt by what we tell ourselves about what other people are doing and thinking because none of us experience an actual reality. All of us experience our own version of what we interpret is happening in reality. So your somatosensory cortex can send mild pain signals all the way up to debilitating pain that might even make you wanna leave this earth if that's how you're experiencing things on the inside. The next brain system you need to know about is your brain reward system. Our brain reward systems are constantly manipulated by the environment around us. Your brain reward system is your addiction system. The chemical dopamine is the main chemical in your addiction system. What does that mean? I tell you, any marketing executive in this country knows about the brain reward system because every time you see a commercial pop up on your phone or an ad on television for some good food and you start mm, craving that food, that's your brain reward system saying, hey, there's something that'll make me feel good and give me a burst of dopamine. Pew, 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 pew. And when your brain reward system or that dopamine is going off, it leads to habit forming addictions. So we have a tendency to think of addiction as um, only for cocaine or opioids, alcohol, marijuana, tobacco, but addictions can also be other people your significant other. You can be addicted to work, addicted to money, addicted to sex or orgasms, addicted to your smartphones and your social media. So addictions are actually a part of every human and every human society. But we often let those addictions go unchecked because we're not familiar with our brain reward system. The next brain system you need to know is your biochemical matrix. Now, biochemical matrix is a Dr. Alana term for the chemicals and the hormones and all of the juices that flow in our body when the rest of these brain systems are triggered. Examples of your biochemical matrix are estrogen, testosterone, adrenaline, yes, even that dopamine, serotonin, oxytocin, and many other chemicals that flow through our body and extend the way that we may feel or think when those other primitive brain systems are in effect. Those are the six primitive brain systems that you need to know. Your reticular activating system, your amygdala, mirror neurons, somatosensory cortex, brain reward system, biochemical matrix. Those six brain systems add together to be constantly operational. They never go to sleep, even when you go to sleep. And so they are constantly pulling on your behaviors and your choices, and they are affected by every psychological trauma that you go through. Wow.
I just, I'm, I'm sitting here. I don't know if you all were taking notes, but I got all kind of notes in here. This is what it looks like when you show up and you learn, like I'm sipping my coffee y'all because I think I'm addicted. You know, I am, that's part of my, um, what is it? My brain reward system. <laughs> um, but talk to us about what does that look like when, um, I, I wanna talk to us about the women and how, when you look at all of this, but I, I automatically went back to children and how we process these 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 six uh, primitive brain systems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, children in particular. So one thing to understand is that the human brain, this this human brain, this prefrontal cortex, tap it right here behind your forehead. Boop boop boop. Wake it up. Ah! Hit the reset button. I, I, I was the Nintendo generation, so I, <laughs> I hit the reset button, okay? Um, we use less than 10 to 15% of this part of our brain when making decisions. That's what the study said. Wow. And when I was, when I was reading, because I, I love reading, I, I'm addicted to information. I love to know what's going on. Um, and when I was reading about these things, that's when it really occurred to me that we are, we're primitive. We think we're advanced because we have advanced technology, but we really are not operating on a realistic thought process. This whole black and white thing, this whole race thing is ridiculous. We have, we're one human race. The, the, the human genome project proved that in 2003 that all of our DNA was like 99.9% .9 the same. So every division that you see that's, you know, uh, imbalance, like patriarchy, <laughs> um, any like male and female, very, very similar. Just, you know, our brains, very, very much the same. So when I started thinking about that, I'm like, this doesn't make any sense how we're doing any of this stuff. Right. And I started to see how primitive it was. And then I'm like, what's wrong with us? Because we haven't updated our understanding of our own brain. Yeah. You, you can activate this, but it's not even fully available to you until you're 25 because your brain is still maturing. So think about how children act and then think about we're animals. Animals with un undeveloped brains so if the adults are acting reactive and demonstrating snappy, snarky, sarcastic, uh, non-empathetic language, which is all of our households, I'd venture to say, because our society is very non-empathetic. We are emotionally incompetent in our society. So, so what, what I hear you saying is if our prefrontal amygdala is not fully developed, then even with the kids, this is why you see everybody being so impulsive and, mm -hmm. and acting out without thinking or even having a feeling of, oh my gosh, you know how desensitized, I'm looking at all of these and tying it in. This makes sense now when we see things on television and we don't react or all the crime that we're seeing in St. Louis or in other states when it comes to women. And we just sit back as if we're watching a television show because we're desensitized. Mm -hmm. um, so that empathy level isn't there. Please talk to us about empathy because I think that's the part of a huge part of the healing process for us. Absolutely. And I'll tell you how I came to that space. When I realized that even as a uh, encyclopedia reading, but gang banging St. Louis kid, you know, I mean, I did, I'm just saying, but that's, <laughs> When you, when I look back and I'm able to look at it through the lens of trauma and be able to think about even my path and this information was not in there. And I, I'm, when I started realizing that, I started talking to my colleagues like, hey, y'all are, you know, I know we, trauma was kind of a satellite thing in our training. And that's really how the mental health industry treats trauma as a satellite thing or like, associated with borderline personality disorder um, and PTSD and people who act out. But when you really listen to it, the thought processes of trauma are there in everyone. And it's, it's, it's 
really a semi-delusional state if you want to know the truth about it because it's it's not it's false beliefs we're very addicted to this physical roller coaster so we are we've been taught how to interpret this world and then it causes us to ride this ride because our beliefs are operative yeah yeah Yeah. you know I I want to tap into um any of our sisters uh, that are in the Um, When you look at these six areas, this is a lot to take in. I'm like, oh my gosh, you know how you learn something new every day. And you're like, I was this, I was, I was 54 today when I learned about my biochemical matrix Mm -hmm. uh, and and how important that is and and, and how that impacts the things that we see and do and how we feel because the feelings are real. What, is there anyone in the chat that'd like to speak to what they learned today and how that impacted them or questions? Because we want to keep having these questions. Um, Anyone can definitely unmute yourselves because we want this to be interactive. Yes, ma'am. Good morning, ladies. Uh, First of all, I want to say thank you for being on the platform this morning. And Dr. Alana, you are very inspirational and motivational. I have definitely learned a lot. I am going into the mental health professional. I graduated in December with my master's in counseling. I'm a dual major at Lindenwood University. So once I complete my degree uh, in counseling, then I will, in the spring, take my three courses towards my LPC. And it's so amazing that you talked about the dopamine of the brain. I was in a group counseling course two summers ago, a summer ago. And in that course, you have to do six group counseling sessions. And since we were on Zoom, we had, our professor had people to come in on Zoom with us. And then we had to choose what we wanted to do. But the gentleman that I had, he talked about this very same thing that you're talking about and how your brain works and the the chemicals and the enzymes in your brain and how it affects people and how it affects kids. I'm a set, I'm, I uh, deal with middle school and high school children. I was always a secondary person, not like, you know, little kids so much. However, going to school, I said, you know what, you've taken all the other psychology courses, you might as well take child sight. And when I took child sight, it really talked about the different stages and levels of where kids are, where their minds are, what they should and should not be doing. And even if you're not a person that reads, like Dr. Alana said, reading, you just start reading and you will be surprised the things that you learn and how it really does affect everybody. Like she said, me, you, kids. And once I took my child psych course, I began to deal with kids and people so differently. So I thank you for this. And uh, if I could have your email address, because I would like, if you have other seminars, webinars, I would love to tune into them because I'm growing right now in my profession. And I'm trying to absorb as much as I can, uh, how I can, just across the board. So, um, because it's definitely needed. I work in a, a high school setting. And I see it every day as my students walk through the door. And sometimes just a kind word to the kids, you just don't know how much that goes a long way. We don't know when they leave home, if they were upset with their parents, where they slept last night, if they slept, if they had food to eat. And the fact that you greet them with a smile in the morning and you just say, baby, make good choices today. That means so much to them. And one never knows what that does. And it, and it builds relationships and rapports with the kids. So when the kids are in trouble and they're distressed in the school, they come to you. Why? Because you were kind to them at the beginning of their day. And they don't forget that. Thank, so thank I want to so just thank you for being here on the platform. You are very insightful. Thanks, okay. Keisha. Um, you know, she made me think about when she talked about how the kids are coming into the buildings and the things that they are in inter- how they're interacting, that has something to do with the mirror neurons, right? The things that they see at home and and um, some kids come in, it, it's kind of like when you think about the love languages, some kids are very affectionate, whereas, and even thinking about domestic violence, um, well, have you ever had friends that every time they talk to you, they hit you? You're like, wait a minute, if you hit me one more time. Right. <laughs> Girl, you, know, <laughs> no. hey. <laughs> you know, so, cause it, and then it triggers something for you. I want you to speak more to that mirror neuron because I know that's something that we don't even realize is happening. Yeah, that's a big part of domestic violence. Um, so I, it's really, really a concept that is important to get. Those mirror neurons are soaking up 
like this is the word that I use for phone. This is the word that I use for book. Like if, if you speak in a different language, you whatever language you speak in or think in, you're taught the subjective labels that go along with things. What word applies to this? So for example, a word like disrespectful, right? That is a interpretation of someone's behavior. Mm -hmm. uh, my child went <sighs> when I told them something and then that label, there's a label on that behavior that's come from who, whoever taught you that that particular behavior is disrespectful. So the way that we interpret things and place labels on them are soaked up by our experiences, our environment, what we went through, how we've been programmed to think. And also getting, you may not be getting slapped into your way of thinking, but sometimes literally you are. I came from a Black family. Right. <laughs> that was not too far out of Mississippi. Come on, can I keep it real with you? Okay, um, okay. <laughs> Ouch. Ouch. Listen, I love my mama. <laughs> Hell, my mom used to whip my butt. Okay? Lay them hands. You know, I know we've talked about it. I, we, we, you know, I, I understand now, and I understand that she was doing a better job than than her parents had of communicating. But still, when angry, we have been taught correct the behavior by placing hands. Yeah, right. I'm right. saying was, you know, <laughs> we are not I'm throwing above. hands on you. Laying hands. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm giving it a little too real today. Uh, <laughs> Keep it. So when we are uh, absorbing that information and operating in that way, we're generally repeating behaviors that have been shown to us. That person who's slapping you when her, she talks to her family, that's how they talk. That's what they do. They lay hands. Yes. And there are people who, I mean, Think about our culture. Our culture does not respect boundaries, human boundaries. Like all. they can lie all they want to about this, uh, this abortion debate is about, you know, uh, it's, it's not about anything other than control. Yes. And the, the, the truth of it is that we're still in a very slave-like mindset. The people who designed and built the systems that we're operating in, they were primitive themselves. Mm -hmm. And we've passed this primitive down all the way from you know when when we left out of Africa and, and the ones that lost their melanin went over the mountains lost their melanin in their minds in those mountains for some years thousands of years right that we call European that culture and that mindset that came in and wiped out the Native American civilizations and enslaved Africans to build their empire like that's traumatic that's a lack of empathy that's very primitive way of dealing with things and it created something beautiful but it's all kind of coming to a head right now because we don't know who we are you know it's interesting when you talk about uh the lack of empathy as a african americans growing up in the community we used to say we have the village you know we had a village concept so if we saw something going on we could pull that woman away or pull that brother and say, come on, let's go walk outside or bring the kids over here. Talk to us. I want us to have, because there may be some people that are literally going through this right now, or you know somebody, you know somebody, you know somebody, and we know that we need to take care of each other. Let's talk about some of the immediate steps that we can take, uh, outsiders, or even as a person that's dealing with domestic violence, when they're in a situation, what, some, what are some steps they can take? Absolutely. The first thing is you got to do some internal work. Let's keep it real. Um, if you are being physically assaulted in your relationship, you are accepting that the person, when their amygdala goes off and they physically do something to your body, that that is okay. That's what you're accepting. And if that is the path that you want to experience, because we will continue to experience tra traumatic, primitive things be uh, until we do the self work to say, I deserve to be loved without violence, loved without being harmed, 
and I don't accept this in my life. That's kind of the first thing that has to happen. That means figure out how to be physically safe. Your, your physical being is the first thing you need to protect. So if that's um, making a very stealthy plan to leave, then I suggest stealthy because when women leave, that is when it is the most dangerous. Right. Okay. And, and let me say, when men leave, I want to be clear that men and women are being abused in their relationship. So we really need to have real conversations that women can abuse men and men can abuse women. More men abuse women than uh, statistically, but if we think about reality, because right. we gotta stop thinking so black and white. Right. We know that women lose their temper and hit and yes. yell and scream and, and uh, call names and other things too. So let's just let's keep, keep it real, real today. Yeah, okay. let's keep it real. You know, intimate partner violence is, is real on every level. Um, adults and teens, we see it over and over and over again in schools. And, you know, as a therapist, I've seen it when girls come in and they hide it from their parents. We learn how to hide things very well. Mm -hmm. um, uh, one of the questions um, is asked is what steps should we avoid if we know someone is in an abusive relationship when attempting to show support? Mm, what steps to avoid? I would say avoid telling people what to do. Avoid sounding judgmental. If I was you, what I would do is. Yeah, because you, you cannot, when we, empathy is not, not just being emotionally connected to the situation. That is important, but empathy is also really placing yourself in the other person's experience, not their shoes. Because when we put ourselves in other people's shoes, like I'm coming in with my seven and a halves, like, oh, well, right. your tens that you just need smaller shoes, you know? Mm -hmm. Like I'm coming with my solution from my background, with my skill set and what I've lived, which is unfair to expect another person. Now, I know they don't know about this brain, right? Because right. I didn't know about it. And I'm a psychiatrist and I'm literally the only trauma psychiatrist. And it was like popping out on the other side of a black hole and looking at the world like, oh damn, we just need a, a, a anatomy lesson, uh, right. an updated understanding. So the, the what you should avoid is judging that person because whatever it is that's going on with them, um, they're doing the best that they can. And yeah. they may be addicted to the trauma drama um, they may think that they can't do anything else. So your job is really to validate, listen enough to be able to understand why they think that that's what they need to do. Because most of the time when somebody talks about it, if you really listen, right, and I'm going to give you the love skill so that you can remember empathy, the L is these are not the these are not the steps to avoid. These are the steps to do. Okay. Write it down, y'all. So, write it so down. Let me let me be clear. Write it down. Yeah, you write look, it down. Look, look at that, y'all. Listen, Listen and look with this without judgment. Judgment. Okay. That's the first one. L. Listen and look without judgment because your brain is gonna. I mean, it's always going. It's you're gonna right. draw a conclusion. It's gonna be like. Uh, you know, why she keep, why staying with him? Why yes, she yes, yes. Like, what, what are you doing? Well, you know, you got enough money, but you don't know what the entanglements are. You don't know what the, the real uh, experience that they're having is. So just put your version to the side because you really cannot, just like they can't see the hundreds of thousands of thoughts that you think a day. Yes. So you're sitting still and your brain is. Yes. Right. Theirs is the same. So and, I, and you know what? I want to, we're going to tag team on this love thing because, you know, yeah, I got go the ahead. love thing. She got the love thing from the psychiatrist perspective. Uh, yes. and, and, and I'm going to give you all the love thing from the therapist perspective as well. Internal, she's going to give you external. You know, this is the thing. A lot of times we're in relationships and everybody can see the mess, but we can't because we in it. You know, be like, dang, I, you know, later on, you'd be like, how come you ain't tell me this? You're like, I was trying to tell you, but you couldn't see it because you was all in, you know, and I remember even being in relationships that I thought that the guy was all that in a bag of chips. And I mean, like Lay's potato chips, you know, you can only, you know, you can't stop eating it. And I realized, y'all, he was crumbs. Like, you know, when you open up a bag and it's half full. So also, 
the listening to them is also listening to yourself. Like listening to your gut. You know how you be in a movie, like something says, get out. And, and sometimes we don't listen to that. You got to listen to yourself as well. Go with the O. Go with the O. Okay. Oh, Y'all better be taking note. Observe the emotions inside of yourself and other people, right? That internal stuff going on, put a label on it, say, I'm... I'm, I'm anxious. I'm, I'm embarrassed. I'm, I'm feeling abandoned. I'm put some words to it. We stink at identifying our emotions. Yes. What do you, what's your O? Yes. So my O is observe as well. But what I want you all to get used to doing when you're seeing people, because I was, you know, in a home where I saw a lot. So I learned to observe the nonverbals. I observed when my mama was like, it's time for us to go pack your stuff and let's get out right now. Mm -hmm. I observe when a woman is looking like, I, you know, come on outside, girl. Let's talk right now. Mm -hmm. Let's get away. Let's just go have a cup of coffee. So learn to observe each other's nonverbals. Even with a mask on, y'all, we can see a whole lot with a person's eyes. If they, mm -hmm. if they showing you something, you know, be able to observe those nonverbals of each other. Absolutely. You know, sometimes and we can't not, talk. Communication is 80% nonverbal, 20% words. So understand that and word those words have to come out of your brain. They got to float across space, pow, and they hit the other creator and their brain has to take it in and interpret it through all those primitive things. Mm -hmm. It's like having on a, a negative space bubble that we have to pop in order to handle ourselves in a way that we are we are communicating non-violently you have to practice understanding your emotions and so we're really talking about the same thing making yes. the, turning your eyes on so you see the invisible stuff is yes. basically connecting with more of reality so do yes. you, you're blind if you're not paying attention to that non-verbal stuff uh willfully if you will and those are triggers because you know how somebody might come up on you and you're like, don't, don't just come up on me like that. Yeah. yeah you know, I observe absolutely. how people say, give me my 50 feet. I like there that the know. pandemic has made people kind of. I do too. I just said that this morning. We got space now. Get away from me. Yes. <laughs> don't stand up. Don't get close to me. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's really about setting boundaries. So let me say V is validate the experience of yourself and the other creators involved. We, we're all having the same conversation, but we're experiencing it differently because we, we're thinking through different things. We have experiences. We have words that we define slightly differently. So recognizing that all of our experience is very real to us and people deeply believe their own beliefs, but that's really all it is. We don't have to keep putting our beliefs and our hands on other people. And the E is be effective choose better words, right? Yeah, like yeah. the first thing that you want to say is probably not going to be coming from your prefrontal cortex. Okay? <laughs> That's yeah. right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. That through. <laughs> what's what's that your through. V and E? Um, my V is validate as well. Um, again, validate yourself, affirm yourself, constantly give yourself positive affirmations. There are times when a person can get in your head and make you feel like you are less than. Mm -hmm. And um, and you believe that thing, you know, because you hear it over and over again. We talked about all the forms of of abuse, but that that piece of when a person gets in your mind and they change your mindset, you literally believe I'm not good enough or, you know, that my lips are big and they are, but they're beautiful. So you got to affirm yourself. And, and my E is empower. You know, this is a we thing. That power thing is control, but EM is we. So we have to empower each other as, as, uh, as, as sisters, as a uh, community. That's what it looks like when we're all able to grow and move from a negative situation to a, a positive space. And, uh, that's everything. That's everything. Look, y'all, I know we got resources, but I, before we put the resources out there, I need you, uh, Dr. Alana, to tell them about the Trauma Recovery Academy yes, because y'all just got a little taste, but y'all need to register and go through this thing because we got to be better as people. Yes, that's, that's right. Crazy. The Trauma Recovery Academy is where people can work with me. Um, so the, I do not see patients anymore. Hallelujah. I'm retired y'all. High five. <laughs> yeah. Praise, praise God. 
all right. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm still celebrating that. I um, know me too. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the way that I help people is through education. You can get more of Master Your Trauma, and uh, which is a 30 minute film, educational film, as well as a deeper dive empathy skills practice for traumatized humans. ESP is my signature uh, program. It's my way of helping people to understand how empathy uh, connected with skills and practice really can be healing for anybody. You probably needed to work for your, your traumas and other people. You can show them, come on, show me, say, you can show them how to do better. So the trauma recovery bundle, the membership bundle is $97 a month. And in that membership bundle, you get 24 seven access to those educational videos, as well as you can register for a 90 minute virtual coaching group that's, that meets monthly to help apply the skills uh, over pills. Not that pills are bad, but right. you, got, you can't take a pill every time you're mad. So we got we to gotta have better skills so that modification break, yes we got to break the cycle of domestic violence we got to break the cycle of all of this trauma mm, mm, mm. yes come join me in the trauma recovery academy that's how you can work with me i'm also uh launching my empathy skills practice certification program which is going to be helping people who are interested in learning this methodology to uh, create a targeted system to give back to their community. So uh, if you work with nonprofits or kids, or uh, if you're in the mental health field and uh, counseling or working with people, physicians, um, we have so much trauma, we need to be better informed. Uh, and we need practitioners and people who understand trauma in the form of the brain and can help other people understand it as well. So let me know if you're interested, you can reach me uh, at info at dralana.com. Definitely put that information in the chat. I love that this is uh, culturally relevant material, y'all, that, that we can utilize. Uh, y'all did hear, now don't be calling her trying to get an appointment. She told y'all she retired. And I know, you know, as a therapist, it's hard to say no, it's hard to say no when you're used to being in this healing profession, but you got to, um, we, that's how we all evolve. And that's why we wait yeah. for Keisha and everybody else to jump on board. We're going to give you different, uh, a lot of resources that will allow you all to um, be able to connect with community resources for yourself, uh, for your family members, for children as well. Um, this is just the tip of it. I, I'm just thankful to be a part of this. And uh, I thank you, Dr. Alana, for making it simple. Like I'm, I'm about to go and check on my on my uh, somatic sensory cortex. Come on, girl, I'm gonna be listen. It out, you know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, let me. Uh, I'm gonna share my screen and show because I want to be um, mindful of the time. Um, Here we go. All right. Here's some mental health resources for anyone who uh, may be. Our cameras and screenshot it. Yeah, come on, get it, get it. This is uh, courtesy of the Dr. Lana Trauma Recovery Institute. Um, this is the suicide, the suicide prevention line available 24/7. If you are, and they they have wonderful people there who can just talk to you, hear you out, um, or anybody that may need some help and help connect you to resources because um, that is often what people need, a, a support and connection. Um, the domestic violence hotline is on here. Uh, Rain, they do wonderful work. Trevor Lifeline is especially for LGBTQ plus youth. Um, Twiloha is to write love on her arms. They are, uh, they help with providing scholarships for treatment and help reduce the cost of treatment and connect you to mental health and, uh, resources in your community. Uh, NAMI, as well as SAMHSA, uh, have resources available for you. So I hope you got a screenshot. I'm going to stop sharing. Anything else that you want to add to that? Um, I know that the Boris Foundation um, under Taraji P. Henson offers free therapy. Um, that's another resource if you all are looking for therapy as well. Um, and we will also put up on the slide some resources for you all. Definitely use these resources and share the resources that are here. Um, it says start here. 
there's a, I know a rally that's happening next week um, on the 23rd with the two deaf organization that's next, that next slide that comes up. Go to these resources. There is just absolutely no way that we could cover everything within an hour. This is just a taste, you know, or a sip, as I say, when I'm talking about what's in your cup, but you got to keep it full and you have to share the resources. And um, the one thing that I've realized is we can't, you know, we can't work from an empty cup, y'all. We just can't. Um, but we are better together when we're able to come together and be able to offer resources. So, you know, like I said, if, if you know that there's someone that really needed this or you really needed this, these are the type of things that you tap back in over and over again. You know, I think there's a, a space on Facebook because I think this is Facebook Live. I know that it is that you can then go back and save and go over this again. If there's any questions, uh, we are available to you all. You can definitely probably just put it in the chat or, or, or get with us. Um, I have to say in all transparency that I also am not practicing. Uh, <laughs> this is a faith walk for me. I'm just walking. Um, um, I'm owning my now with the, with the talk show. And, um, but there are other therapists in my office that are seeing clients and I am in schools. But I think that the masses, the piece, this here is therapy for us. This here is uh, being a, a space of empowerment, um, it's especially you heard what um, um, Dr. Howell talked about with the schools and everything. We have to be able to have a platform to get this message out. So anytime that you need us, reach out to us because this is the best way for us to all get this, get this, uh, get this going. So I'm looking in the chats to make sure if you all, if there's just one thing that you all um, got from this or, or share, Make sure that you all share, share, and share some more in the STL. I see, I see Cheryl asks, what techniques do you recommend in disciplining children without traumatizing them? Um, I recommend empathy skills practice. My, 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 listen, y'all, I, I want to be fully transparent. A little boy punched my daughter uh, a couple days ago because he was mad because he they used to like each other and then now she done moved on and and he didn't somebody else like her and he mad at everybody and then he hitting her uh whoo listen talk about one, wanting to traumatize a child okay right. uh, uh, put your uh, hands on my baby I, don't lie. I wanted to beat up an eight-year-old uh, okay but I also recognize and understand that we are in a society that is so steeped in people who are out of control emotionally and who have, I, I lovingly and horrifyingly call humans walking amygdalas because that's what we are. Our, our reactions are, are uh, when we get upset or we get hurt or perceive pain, we lash out at other people and we give pain. So I do on a certain level understand why, uh, the actions happen because children, of course, we talked about have that immature brain. Uh, however, the grown-ups got to grow up. We yes. think like children. Yes. We get when we get mad, we go back into our traumas and our yes. Because uh, yes. <laughs> I'm from the because I will put my hands on. It's a process. Yes, it's, it's a, a process. process. It's a process, right? Y'all, <laughs> so, y'all, check on me because. <laughs> Uh, check on your strong friends, y'all. Check, check on your on strong, your strong friends. friends, okay? Uh, <laughs> I'm still wrestling myself on this one. So, yeah. my, but my point is that we have to break the cycle. Us. You're here, you're aware. So I can't worry about the people who are not here soaking this information up. I got to give it to the people who are ready. And that means you. If everybody could put one word in the chat, one word in the chat that you got from this. I love to break the cycle, but one word that that uh, you're going to take away that empowers you, your affirming word. What is that one word that you will take away from today, uh, if you will, everybody? Yes, I see them coming up. Um, this was everything. She said, this was so awesome and amazing becoming a mental health professional and school counselor. I'm a sponge absorbing as much information that I can to grow. Um, that's everything. Um, 
I'm just so happy to be present on the platform to engage with you all this greatness and link arms. This is what community looks like. It, it truly is. And so um, I thank you all. We, we are, we, this is just the beginning, y'all. We got to do this because um, trauma is real. Yeah. So as, as we wrap up, I just, uh, again, this is our second time in the last two weeks. You know, synergy is everything. Uh, Dr. Alana was on the On Your Now show. Y'all need to go back and watch it. And she dropped a lot of keys and knowledge <laughs> that we all could take away from. Um, but I just want to wrap up. I see a few words out here. So um, I'll wrap these up by saying this I'm in the chat. Okay, it's important that um, we break the cycle today because that's what freedom looks like. But to be informative is to understand the value of validation. We cannot allow people to control us. We have to listen, observe, and understand what empowerment looks like because that's the love principle. So continue to walk in your freedom and continue to understand that this is just the beginning of the empathy evolution. Continue to be blessed today, you all. Understand the value of what it looks like for us to connect share, share, and share some more in the STL. And we will see you all hopefully soon. Um, stay connected to everything that we offer. We thank you. Thank you, Dr. Alana. Thank you, Tracy, um, Sorors, uh, sisters. We are so, so excited about the information that we received today. We, we couldn't pay you enough for the information that you have given us. Uh, your line sister, Nicole, uh, Monique Norfolk, she, we were in there tag team and like, baby, she got to teach us about this primitive thing because like you with your child, you know, I got a little boy, nine years old. They were like, boy, here come Dr. Carter again. Yeah, I'm coming. But here's the thing. We are learning. And this is such a great platform. We thank the co-chairs of Cheryl Harmon and Civil, sorry, Cheryl Harmon and Sybil Smith uh, for coming up with this idea, thanking you guys for an opportunity to be a part of this fantastic program. We also like to thank our first, our second vice president, who you know, Deltas are busy. We got our hands in everything. So she had to jump off. And so we also, our president, who is working with girls today in our rites of passage. They're, they're going through their, their cer uh, ceremony today to become Mahabahes. So I'm just honored and appreciative, appreciative for your service today. And I know that the team has something great for both of you, but we cannot repay what God has given you to give us today. And so I'm going to go to my little addiction thing, which is food. But I'm getting better, girl, because instead of eating cupcakes, cookies, and cakes, and, and sodas, I am eating celery, carrots, uh, soups. You know, I'm get, I'm not doing Weight Watchers, y'all. ain't putting that on me. I, I got, I need more than 28 points. So, <laughs> but with, without any further ado, I'm going to give it to, um, no, Sybil say no. We love y'all. Have a good day. And we'll talk to you on the next time. Bye-bye. Mm, mm, mm. See you later. Love you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.